What's going on guys? Got a knife review for you. Uh, this is of a Reese Wheeland uh, Custom Raven. Uh, this one is number seven. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the words inside there, um, but it says Reese Wheeland uh, Raven number seven out of 50, I think. Uh, Karambits that he had made. Uh, I don't know how long ago he made these Karambits, but uh, this was a fixer upper. So, um, got some pictures here for you. Got this one off the USN a while back, and um, this guy had beaten the <laughs> he beat the crap out of this knife. Um, you can see the tip right there uh, was was completely broken off. Um, all kinds of not scratches, but like tape and uh, marks all over the blade and that kind of stuff. The titanium, uh, which was I think bead blasted before you know it was all kind of scratched up um, there's you know a better picture of the sorry about the glare right there um, better picture of the tip and the kind of the condition this knife was in um, so I bought this one as a fixer upper and you know I know Weiss Wheeland uh, is very collectible and that kind of stuff I don't know in this condition if it's if it's really collectible but you know it's like hey you know what give it a try um, see what this Reese Whelan Karambit is about because uh, I know that they're pretty popular um, in their heyday so uh, again thought I'd try it out try to fix it up and you know I think it turned out pretty well you know I took some uh, very heavy grit sandpaper and I sanded down or sanded I guess this part right here um, that edge so that the curve is no longer you know fully curved all the way down like this so I think the tip maybe went down to here before, but uh, again, I'm not sure. But I basically sanded down the edge so that you get kind of a flat edge right here. You still get the good point, um, the hawkbill form factor. Um, just sanded all this down so that there was a lot of steel uh, right here. It's actually pretty thick. And then after fixing up that blade, um, I scotch brighted the handles here and you know kind of just smooth everything out uh, grease it up with my uh, extreme floral and then sharpened it up on my wicked edge and now it's golden <laughs> it's great you know it, there was a lot of uh, blade play before now it's it's totally solid um, very smooth not perfectly centered or anything like that but you know, overall not too bad uh, compared to the condition it was in. So I'm really, really happy about this knife. Uh, Reese Whelan, if you guys don't know, um, is very, uh, pretty well known in the knife community for just um, doing a lot of uh, Emerson work. He does a lot of frame lock conversions, or at least used to. Um, nowadays, you know, um, Nathawat on the USN, as well as FERC. Um, these are guys that are uh, really well known for their custom work on Emerson's. And the work they do is, is absolutely amazing. But um, I think Reese Whelan, he was doing these um, a long time ago. And so, anyway, he does custom knives. Um, and he does some amazing knives. I mean, knives that are two, three thousand plus dollars, um, which I know, you know, can get even more, but. Uh, you're talking about like these full, you know, auto knives that are just, they're huge knives. Um, hawk bills and um, just very ornamental. All kinds of precious metals and um, precious stones and all that kind of stuff inlaid into uh, the knives. But uh, the Raven, you know, is his his take at the Krambits. And so, um, yeah, I'm just going to do a, a kind of a simple review here. Uh, here it is against the uh, Emerson combat karambit. Uh, I didn't pull out my super karambit, but uh, I think this is fine in terms of a, a good size comparison. Uh, here's the silent soldier flipper right here. And then I brought out the Emerson basically due to the fact that it's a tactical blade and karambits are definitely meant to be tactical. And then of course the sabenza, large sabenza. So um, what you have is a, I believe a two, I think originally was a two and a half 
inch blade or two and three fourths inch blade obviously because of the reprofiling and fixing up the blade and all that kind of stuff um, it's substantially smaller now um, but you know you get a, titan a titanium frame lock um, with a large stainless steel uh, spacer um, I'm pretty sure this is stainless steel and not um, actually you know what is it titanium? It actually might be titanium. Um, pocket clips stainless steel. I'm not sure, actually. So um, I want to say stainless steel because it, it felt pretty substantial. It felt pretty heavy to me. Uh, when I was playing around, when I opened it up and cleaned it all up and stuff like that. Um, but it could very well be titanium as well. I, I Yeah, I really don't know. I mean, it, you can see the different colors in here. Um, so it makes me think that it is it is stainless steel right there. Um, anyway, so uh, frame lock versus the Emerson liner lock. When I hold this combat karambit, um, it is light. You know, it is super light. And I feel like this could flip uh, very easily in, in hand. Um, and in fact, it's very comfortable, you know, with these double uh, liners, you know, with the loop. Um, I feel like that makes for a very comfortable uh, grip, um, you know, on the whole of the crambit. And so uh, when I hold the combat crambit, it's very, very comfortable. When I hold this, um, it's also extremely comfortable, both forward and reverse grip. You know, the ring is very, um, I guess, effective, if you will. But when it's swinging uh, this way, and I know that on the camera it's not in the right angle, but when it's swinging this way, because it's so, it, you know, it's one piece of stainless steel, and because it's substantially heavier, maybe it's maybe it's just due to my inexperience. Um, I just feel like it kind of wobbles all over the place and it doesn't feel very secure, you know, to swing around because it's not, you know, there's nothing preventing it from kind of moving this way. Um, whereas with the crambit, you know, the combat crambit, I can grip it, I can hold it this way and I feel like there's enough, um, you know, surface area and all that kind of stuff to prevent it from shaking up and down, you know, this way. You know, I can, I can hold it pretty easily this way whereas if I'm holding the wheeling combat cramp it see you can kind of see how it wiggles um, flops up and down uh, that way so that's definitely one um, downside of the wheeling crambit versus the Emerson the Emerson crambits um, I mean these are the only two that I've handled so um, but from what I've read, from what I've seen from, you know, a bunch of other people, you know, their reviews on the Crambit is that the Emerson Crambit is is the one that all others, you know, are trying to model after, you know. So I don't know if Emerson made the Crambit before um, Reese Whelan, you know. I, th I think Reese Whelan has a pretty long history um, with Crambits, but, um, you know, I, I would definitely chalk this one up to Emerson for sure you know, making the more comfortable crambit. In terms of quality and all that kind of stuff, obviously, you know, if you're talking about titanium and titanium frame lock, you know, this is my preference. But, you know, when you're talking about actual usage and all that kind of stuff, I think that um, the combat crambit uh, is the way to go. All right, so um, opening-wise as well, um, you know, there's no wave feature or anything like that. Um, you have a tip-down carry option so which to me honestly is kind of pointless you know I, I don't understand why you would carry it um, this way you know other than to pull it out and then you know have this option uh, maybe I'm just so used to Emerson but you know pulling it out of your pocket deploying and then sticking your pinky in there doesn't make for a very <laughs> make you know a very fast deployment um, the other option then is carry this way you know with the pocket clip um, tip up it's tip up but and so your loop is here but again there's no wave to you know drag out the blade or, or anything um, I could put maybe I could maybe put a zip tie here but I'm you know not going to um, so you could pull it out and then deploy 
uh, this way um, and then turn. Uh, you know, so I don't know. It, for to me, for a karambit, um, it makes more sense that it's you know auto deployment or wave deployment like you know the combat karambit. You know, on the combat karambits, you have it in your right pocket this way. You pull it in towards the center of your body. It waves out. You know, this way into reverse grip, and so you're already you know immediately ready. You know, in this position um, to deploy and to engage with you know your whoever you're going against. So I think that's a you know that's a pretty um, I don't know you know that's what the uh, what's the uh, the other five eleven five eleven that you know those tactical blades you know they have they use some pretty good materials and all that kind of stuff but it doesn't have a wave feature either um, and so you know that kind of cram it I, I wouldn't um, prescribe to and then. Uh, the only other one I think is the Fox knives. Is it, I can't remember if it's if it's Fox, but uh, I believe they you know licensed uh, Emerson's wave feature on their crambits. So you know that's a good option um, to go with as well. If I'm talking about the right one. So only real way of deployment is with this really small thumb hole, um, thumb oval, if you will. It works fine actually. Um, very, it's, the knife itself is super smooth. Um, it's Teflon washers inside, uh, so deploys, you know, very fast once you pull it out, tip down, and then <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So, um, as a collector, you know, I, I think this is an awesome piece. It's a great piece, you know, especially after fixing it all, uh, fixing it all up and all that stuff. But um, functionally, uh, combat cramp it. To me is is the way to go you know so i love the combat rabbit i love jason browse um silent soldier flipper you know this as a tactical blade you know as a as a punching blade um this is insane you know i love this finger hole and all that kind of stuff i think browse just did an awesome job um designing this knife you know starting with his neck knife um so um this is a really cool tactical folder Obviously, any Emerson with you know the wave feature, uh, these are going to deploy out of your pocket. You know, super fast, super easy. Um, you know, well, I can't say enough about the Emerson wave feature. So, um, this is my only normal Emerson blade that I have. Actually, no, I have the um, the CQC12 still that's for sale. Um, and then obviously your Sebenza. So, not really your tactical blade uh, as much as an EDC. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's the, the Whelan. Basically, you know, I, I just wanted to show you, you know, I fixed, how I fixed this knife up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I wish I had done a video of it, you know, before I fixed it all up, but I was just too eager once I opened it up, you know, I started working on it right away, um, you know, and then sanded it all down, stuff like that. So right now it's, you know, blazing sharp off the wicked edge, um, shined up and all that stuff. So... Um, yeah, so it's just sitting in my collection, and uh, hope you guys enjoy it. All right, guys, um, let me know what you guys think. Comments down below. You guys take care, and I'll see you guys on the next vid. Bye.